Hello friends, this video on digestion and absorption part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Digestion. So let us see its role in digestion. So gastric juices help in the digestion of proteins and fats. So if you talk about uh, the process uh, as, as we discussed the oral cavity. In oral cavity digestion of carbohydrates took place. In a similar way, in stomach, digestion of proteins and fats will take place. Not much of digestion of carbohydrates. So here only proteins and fats will be taken care of. So let us see how it happens. So in stomach also, the muscles which are present on its uh, inner linings, they expand and con contract and because of which it allows the better mixing of the food. So let us see how this process of digestion takes place. The first thing that happens is the mixing of food and how the mixing of food takes place, the food needs to be mixed well with the gastric juice. Now since we know that gastric juice is going to help in digestion, so the food needs to be food to be mixed with gastric juice. And who will ensure this mixing? This mixing is ensured by the muscular movements of the walls of the stomach. So if you see, due to the contraction and expansion of the muscles, it ensures that the food gets well mixed with the gastric juices. Now this gastric juices has a lot of enzymes. So let us talk about the first enzyme that is pepsinogen. Now pepsinogen as I said is an enzyme which is which is a pro-enzyme rather, it is an inactive form. So who will make pepsinogen active? In presence of HCl which is hydrochloric acid, the environment becomes acidic and in an acidic medium, pepsinogen gets converted into pepsin which is an active enzyme. So pepsin is an active enzyme. Now peps, this acidic environment is a must for uh, making the enzyme active, at least for this enzyme, pepsin. Okay, so now we have an active enzyme, pepsin. So now what will this pepsin do? This pepsin helps in the digestion of proteins. So what it can do is the complex structure of protein, you remember? So whenever you want to think of that complex protein structure, just think of its tertiary structure. So I mean, you don't even get a clue what it is. So those complex proteins, in presence of pepsin, this enzyme pepsin can actually bring down these complex protein structures into peptones or proteoses. So these are relatively simpler structures. I won't say that they are the most simplest form of protein because the most simplest form of protein would be the amino acid. So this is like very complex but if you uh, look at this, they are less complex than proteins. So that means at least one step below proteins. So pepsin helps in breaking down very complex proteins into lesser complex peptones or proteases. And also as I said a small amount of lipases are also released as a part of the gastric juice. So lipases helps in uh, digestion of fats. So some amount of fats are also broken down into simpler forms. Not a large amount of fat digestion of course because lipase is released in small amount. Right? So therefore small amount of fat digestion will also take place. So these are this is how proteins and fats will get digested in the stomach. Now just understand the importance of this acid HCl because without HCl pepsin would not have been activated and if pepsin had not been activated digestion of proteins was not possible. So HCl is very important but at the same time there is a, there is a disadvantage as well. Now HCl makes the entire environment inside the stomach acidic and it makes it so much acidic that it can digest the stomach itself. Now the environment becomes so much acidic that uh, it can actually cause harm to the tissues which form the stomach. So the tissues itself can be harmed due to such a, such, so much of acidity. So who is there to protect the stomach? So for protection you, we have mucus. So mucus and lubricates and protects the epithelium lining of the stomach against the acid. So it protects the epithelial lining of the stomach against the acidic environment. So it protects the epithelial lining of stomach against 
the acidic environment because everything is acidic and generally what happens for example you would have often observed that if there is some uh, bad i mean something some strong mark on, on the floor or something you generally try to use acid because acid is like it is very strong so it actually takes every one layer of your, the the particular substance whether it is the dirt or it, whether it is that substance itself so similarly if it is if the stomach inside the stomach the environment is so much acidic it can actually cause wear and tear of the epithelial cells which form the this organ itself so once the epithelial cells are gone it is like it is gone if the stomach is not there how will digestion happen so somebody act has to actually protect the stomach from this acidic environment because you need acid also hcl is required for digestion and this is also a reason why you have sphincter on both ends of the stomach so that you can keep the stomach isolated from both esophagus as well as small intestine because the environment inside the stomach is highly acidic and so much of acidic environment can actually harm the organs or the tissues inside the body so it is highly isolated from its neighboring parts so this is how stomach plays a very important role in digestion so now you understand how the process of di digestion is gradually proceeding in the mouth some digestion of carbohydrates took place now in the stomach some digestion of protein and some digestion of fats took place however the digestion is not yet complete because peptones and proteases can further be broken down into simpler forms now fats are not completely digested because lipases were present in very small quantities in the oral cavity carbohydrates digestion was done only 30% so remaining 70% is still pending because no digestion of carbohydrates took place in the stomach so we are still left with a lot of digestion so where will this remaining digestion take place so this remaining digestion is going to take place in the small intestine so let us quickly summarize whatever we have studied so far now muscular movements cause mixing of food with gastric juice inside the stomach as i said as a result chyme is formed chyme or chyme whatever you call it well, what is this chyme this chyme is nothing but the partially digested food so the partially digested food is named as chyme so this food was named as bolus while it was moving down the from the oral cavity through the esophagus that time it was called as bolus the same bolus is now called chyme because now it is mixed with gastric juices a lot of chemicals and everything so it is called chyme now this chyme will be partially digested here in presence of hcl when pepsinogen will be converted to pepsin which is an active enzyme and help in digestion of proteins so proteins will be digested partially by pepsin some lipases will also digest some amount of fats partially mucus will protect the inner layer of stomach from being eaten away by the strong hydrochloric acid so this this is what happens inside the stomach so now we will see how the this partial digestion is taken over by complete digestion in uh, small intestine now before we talk about small intestine we need to talk about some other organs which play an extremely important role in the digestive process and that is liver and pancreas so we will talk about liver and pancreas first and then we will take up the, the remaining digestion part of small intestine so this partially digested chyme is passed on to the small intestine through the pyloric sphincter so here you can see the food this is how you ate your food in the oral cavity it was broken down into smaller parts some digestion of carbohydrates took place by salivary amylase then it passed down through the pharynx then through the esophagus finally it reached the stomach through the esophageal sphincter in the stomach in presence of the gastric juices are secreted by the gastric glands in presence of hydrochloric acid pepsin was formed pepsin the help in partial digestion of proteins lipases help in partial digestion of fats due to high acidic environment these were the walls of the uh, stomach was protected by mucus after that the food passed into the small intestine through this pyloric sphincter what happens in the small intestine we will take up a little later but before that let's talk about liver and pancreas thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material 
find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.